episode of Quilt with the Stars is brought to you by Baby Lock for the love of sewing and Koala Cabinets, sewing furniture custom built in America. And thanks for watching Quilting with the Stars. I'm your host, Mary Fonz, and this episode is coming to you from Quilt Market. And that's very exciting because Quilt Market is a place where stars of the quilting world converge on Houston uh, for the fall market and festival. And I have one quilting star with me right here, Lori Smith. Uh, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's, uh, we have a quilt uh, of yours behind us here, and uh, we're going to talk about uh, your inspiration and your history, your past in the quilting world, uh, then do a demo, and then we're going to do a show and tell at your booth, actually. Good. It's going to be a good thing because her booth is very near us, and we're going to go there on location and take a look at it. There is, it's like an explosion of applique and uh, small piecing, and it's very, uh, very beautiful, the work that you do. Well, so you. how did you get started? Like, when, when did you make your first quilt? Well, I started to sew when I was five years old. Okay. My mom taught me how to sew and I made doll clothes. Mm. And then eventually she taught me how to sew for myself. When I, I would say when I was about 18, I made a couple of little quilts with mm -hmm. my grandmother when I stayed at her house. My grandmother was a quilter. When you say little quilts, do you mean doll quilts and, or, or, or simple sure, sure. quilts for a twin size bed? Okay. Nothing fancy. Okay. Um, and then when I was about 24, I started quilting and making actual quilts. I happened to see a quilt in a magazine, took no class, mm. and decided that I could go ahead and make it, which included drafting a medallion-style quilt. Whoa! How I ever did it, I don't know. Type A? Are you like a type A kind of personality? Maybe. It worked. It I worked. was almost a math major in college, ah. but not quite. See, that this is very, you'll see when you see more of the work. That makes sense, actually, because you're very, you're very, uh, exacting, very uh, very specific, and anyway, continue. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. So the medallion quilt. So I made one, and then I waited a couple of years, and I made a few more quilts mm -hmm. and enjoyed it, and that has become my main hobby. And, and, and so I'd yeah. been quilting for about 28 years. And you were an art teacher for, for work, Yes, correct? Yes, okay. yes. Okay. And that was in South Dakota, I believe, though, from Minnesota? Yes, I grew up in Minnesota on a farm, mm -hmm. and then I had moved to South Dakota for a teaching mm -hmm. position. Mm -hmm. And I taught out there for about 22 years mm -hmm. and had decided that it was time for a new chapter in my life, mm -hmm. and I decided to become a quilt pattern designer. Mm -hmm. and is it, scary start. But, yeah, it, yeah. But well, tell me, what was scary about it? I mean, other than you're embarking on a new thing, but but were you were you did you have entrepreneurs in your family? Because you're an entrepreneur. Clearly, you're a businesswoman. My parents are were farmers, mm -hmm. and so self-employment has mm -hmm. always been um, important to us. Sure. Both my sisters are self-employed, also. Okay. It's nice to be your own boss. It the is. hours are long, but it's fun. And so about eight years ago then I decided that this is the direction I was going to take mm -hmm. my life was being a quilt designer. So I spent one year designing quilts, learning the business, how to write patterns, mm -hmm. learning the computer and all of the things associated with it. Mm -hmm. And after a year of, of preparing my patterns, mm -hmm. I went to my first market with 45 patterns. Mm -hmm. Generally a person comes with six or seven, but I thought the more <laughs> patterns I had, the more app somebody would find right. something that they would want to buy. And you were afraid that no one would buy anything, I, you just didn't I know. I wasn't even certain that I would yeah. sell a single pattern. So a year without an income, traveling halfway across the United States to my first show mm. in a car that was 10 years old, scary to say the least. These are risks we take <laughs> if we want to like achieve big things, you know. And I was risks. absolutely amazed by the the reception I received from the quilters and have enjoyed every minute of my job since. Did you sell like one of each of the 45 patterns, or close, even half? Like well, I brought 100 copies of each pattern. <laughs> oh. My car was fully loaded. Yeah. It was, the back end was almost touching oh, no. the tires. What kind of I was, was it? A Beretta. Oh yeah. Yeah, 10 years old. <laughs> the back end was almost touching the tires yeah. and I wasn't certain if it was going to make <sighs> the 1300 mile trip. So I drove around the neighborhood to see if my back end was going to drag on the tires. It wasn't. So I just headed out. I printed 100 copies of each pattern. That is Pretended I had even more patterns, patterns at home oh. and seen what I sold. Mm -hmm. Well, as soon as I got back home, I was hitting print again. And 
it was nonstop customers for three and a half days. I always had a line, and I'm not sure that there was ever a time I wasn't checking somebody out. Wow. And it, on top of all of that, which is extraordinary, congratulations, by the way. That's, and we're going to see why these people line up for Lori's quilts and patterns uh, soon. But uh, you're, you're also a one woman operation. Yes. Uh, you work uh, by yourself, uh, for yourself. Um, and, and I asked you, you know, do you, do you have help? Would you, you know, would you need an employee at some point? But you've probably passed that point. You are doing it on your own. Yes. Yeah. It, I happen to be a person who likes to work on my own. Yeah. I work at in the lower level of my house. Mm -hmm. I s leave the house maybe once a week. Mm -hmm. Usually I'm out of milk, so I have yeah. to go right. down <laughs> and then I get Food. my other supplies. Yeah. Um, otherwise I stay home. Yeah. When I wake up in the morning, within the half hour, I am w at work yeah. and I work until I go to bed. Most work days are at least 14 hour work days, seven days a week but I enjoy what I do, right, right. and so I just keep working. See, if you, they say, if you enjoy what you do, you'll never work a day in your life, you know, and I, I think that, that that is true. Uh, I have found that to be true in my life, too. I've been working 14-hour days lately, <laughs> but not for like the past seven years. I'm just entering this 14-hour day, workday thing. Um, but, but when you do uh, get away, uh, when there is a break, it just in the constant sort of need to produce things and get things done, do you, uh, what do you enjoy to do, you know, other than quilting and, and, and working? And that may be very fulfilling, of course, <laughs> but what else do you do for fun? Do you have other art that you do? Do you paint or, or not since else? Not since I've started yeah. writing patterns. Sure. Because just preparing for the next pattern and the next show right. takes up most of my time. But I do enjoy antiquing. I've oh, antiqued yes. until I was, since I was about 17 years old. Yeah. And so going to a nice antique show or flea market is always fun. You said still water. You wanted because your birthday's coming up. Yes. And you were going to take a yes. day and do that. Yes. Well, That's then great. there's some flea markets that are. And on my way home from Houston, I will stop at several antique shops Good. on my way home. And I've discovered usually my pickup, I drive a pickup nice. to market and like it has to fit inside. But on the way home, if my pickup's rather full and I find a lot of good things, mm -hmm. I can haul stuff on my tailgate <laughs> from Texas to Minnesota. I can tie it on good enough. I have no that doubt anything that you can I do can that. fit on yeah. the, in the pickup. That's good. That's awesome. Well, the antiques have to inspire you and feed your design aesthetic, right? Because yeah, because it, I was an antiquer first, right. and so my quilts are based on yeah. antique quilts, mm -hmm. which has always been my favorite era. Mm -hmm. I don't produce quilts that are. Um, authentic to any particular sure. era, but it sure. has the look of an antique quilt. And, and even the, the colors that you choose, the, um, the value is fairly low contrast in terms of like, you know, you, there's, some, there's some beige and some dusty rose, and those colors remind me of, you know, the antique style or country style in a way. Yeah. So yeah. I try antiquing. to work outside of my color comfort zone. Yeah. And after I make the quilt, I think I like it but if I would have done it in the colors that I generally like, I would like the quilt even more. Uh -huh. So yeah. I've be just decided to make it in the colors that I like. Yeah. When I work outside of my zone, I don't like the quilt as much. Yeah. And so that's how I work. It's funny, like the older I get, the more I sort of realize it's okay to just like what I like, you know? Yeah. And, and I was talking to a quilter yesterday and she said, my stash of fabric is enormous and I'm not apologizing for it. I feel sorry for people who don't have a huge stash of fabric, <laughs> you know, and it's true. It's like those colors that we were drawn to, there's a reason why we're drawn to them. We're good at using them and, and that sounds like it's true for you as well. Yes. yes. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm glad you antique and you also have a, a kitty cat at home. Yes, I do That's have good. a cat. That's good. Um, she came to me homeless. I live out in the country mm -hmm. on 40 acres. I had a house built four years ago. Yeah. And so I set up the lower level for my business. And in that's the, main... the whole lower level? Do you, yeah. I mean, do you, have, you have several rooms, I'm sure. Yes. Yeah. Well, I have a big office area mm -hmm. where I do all of the pattern printing, mm -hmm. writing, um, processing of orders. And then I have my sewing studio. Mm -hmm. And in my right off my sewing studio, I have a closet for mm -hmm. my fabric. Six Good. feet by 22 feet. It is filled with um, shelves all the way around, mm. floor to ceiling. I have a stash. I have no doubt. That's good. <laughs> That's good. Thank you so much, Lori. Okay. We're going to take a look at a demo next, and Lori's going to show you some of her brilliant hand applique, and then we're going to take a look at uh, the booth. So stick around.
This episode of Quilt with the Stars is brought to you by Baby Lock for the love of sewing and Koala Cabinets, sewing furniture custom built in America.